What's good, guys? Your boy, Mr. Old School Rider. Come back at you one more again on Hey Use Your Inside Voice live from downtown Atlanta. I have one of the experts in a line of work. Some people not successful at doing, but this guy is. I have the prison doctor with me today. He's changing lives right now and doing all type of stuff for the community. Tell us about yourself, prison, Mr. Prison Doctor. Well, thank you for having me on. First of all, I appreciate you, my brother. Um, I am a prison prevention specialist. I work with uh, at-risk youth. Uh, and I mentor them and, and help transform their lives from uh, going to a place that I went for over 20 years of my life when I was a kid oh, wow. for vehicular armed robbery. Hmm. Uh, and so uh, when I came home from prison, I wanted to help some of these kids not make some of the boneheaded decisions I made when I was a kid. So I started this program called The Prison Doctor, and God has really blessed it to uh, be very effective with helping at-risk youth. So uh, that's kind of like where I'm at with this, man. Are you, I'm going to let you have the floor just for a little bit like we're at church right now. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. It's on you right now. Get your message out. My man. Well, let me just say this. I'm here in Atlanta. I started my business in Detroit. I uh, come from a famous family in Detroit. My dad was a Motown funk brother, played with Marvin Gaye. On what's going on and let's get it on that horn was my dad. Oh wow! So I grew up very privileged. Uh, had a lot of good things uh, um, that was given to me when I was a kid. You know what I mean? I uh, had a very privileged life, but it didn't stop me from making a boneheaded decision and picking up a gun one day and committing armed robbery. Uh, so um, my plight now is to try to teach kids, you know, not to make some of those same mistakes that I made. You know, so but it starts with men standing up and doing what they're supposed to do and taking a proper post to help some of these kids, man. And, and that's just not being done right now, particularly here in Atlanta where we're at today. Uh, a lot of these kids are dying on the streets daily, mm. daily. And um, unfortunately, the legislature, uh, legislature and uh, the mayor's office and the governor's office, in my opinion, are just not doing enough because mm. kids are still suffering and dying on the streets constantly and crime is getting progressively worse as we sit here talking. Uh, so my platform is a little, uh, it's a, it's, it's really in your face type of deal. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, miss my words. I don't play with this stuff. Um, uh, and I'm very hard on those who we elect to put in office to do a particular job. And then when we put them in office, they fail in their duty. And, and I just, I'm, I think that we need to start holding those kind of people accountable either by censoring them or, 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 or something, some kind of consequence that when you, you know, you promise to do something, fight crime, you know, and we put you in office to do that. And you, you know, you get in office and, you, and, and you're filling our kids. I think that that is worthy of a consequence and an action, because the reality is this stuff has been going on for far too long and, and not enough action has been taken. Uh, and uh, I have a real problem with that. And I, I really do, uh, because I love our children. Our youth are the, are the future. And I'm quite frankly not seeing enough men uh, stepping up and, and taking their posts. And uh, getting out here and trying to help these kids, you know, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of brothers that's, that's doing it and bless their heart. But unfortunately, it's not happening at a fast enough pace because it's getting worse by the day. So, you know, that's that's kind of where I'm at with this, man. You know, every everybody talks about, man, well, you know, let's wait. You know, you got to wait. You know, things are going to take time to change. It takes time. And, you know, and uh, I'm just not about that. Uh, I'm about getting it done like right now, yesterday. You know, why everybody's talking about wait on, you know, the mayor's office and wait on laws to change and wait on funding to get money to help. the All that stuff is irrelevant to me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think people can need to get out here and start talking to these kids, knocking on doors or whatever the hell they got to do to stop these kids from going to prison and, and losing their lives over over nothing. So yeah, that's very yeah. true. That's what I like about you, man. You pretty much in your face like old school. Like, hey, dude, we got to get this done. Even, you know, most of our people, they're talking about we need to pray on it. Why stuff getting worse? Yeah, I mean, you know, prayer is good. Uh, and prayer is absolutely needed. And matter of fact, the world needs more of it. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's that's the reality. Because the, the reality is, is that the part of the problem is, is that God has been taken out of the equation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the that's one of the biggest components of what's going wrong with our kids is because our parents don't talk God. Um, the, the, you know, the schools don't even talk God no more. The churches, you know, are more about entertainment you know, for most of the service, you know, you go in there, it's like a, it's like a concert, oh, you know what I mean? Or, or a networking event, you know, it's not really talking about God and talking about the word, you know, and things like that. And I think that's kind of a, uh, the problem also, uh, is the lack of spiritual connection with our children. You know, our children don't have no concept of God. 
you know, our children are not spoken to where you where they're hearing words like greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Words that inspire and uplift our kids. They're not hearing that. You know what they're hearing? What are they hearing? Tell they're me. hearing that women ain't nothing but B's and H's. They're hearing mm. that 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 get rich or die trying. The, these are the lyrics that they're hearing. See, like when I grew up, my dad was playing with Motown. You know, groups called themselves the Supremes, meaning the highest, the miracles, you know, great names. Today, these groups, man, are calling themselves B's with problems and, and hoes <laughs> with attitudes. Man. You know what I mean? And, and that's just reality. The, the lyrics are, uh, it places materialism at a, at a higher value than Oof. human life. You know what I mean? So, so, and, and these are the things that's problematic in our community, man. You know, and, and I, I really go hard on, on the men and the mothers, you know, with, with some of the crap they're doing as far as with the social, the Instagram crap. You know, that's a big problem. You know, you got mothers posting butt shots on Instagram, you know what I mean? And, and then checking their phone every, every five damn minutes for likes. You know, and kids are seeing their parents, you know, behave like this, man. You know, so uh, and these things are problematic, man. It's just, it just is, man. So um, uh, I place ninety percent of this on on parent, just just poor parent, uh, 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 parenting, man. Uh, uh, parenting. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just just, just poor parenting, man. Now, so people, the parents be getting distracted, man. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but but life is set up like that. You know, this is why I'm more about taking away. Sometimes social media from kids, the phones and the games and the Xboxes and all this, because a lot of these things are distractions. You know what I mean? It's, it distracts the kid, you know, from just using his own creative thinking. It distracts the kid from reading books that edify and shows him, you know, uh, uh, things that he needs to be doing, you know, as far as with his life or, you know, to better himself. We're so consumed up with, with Xbox and, and, and what's the damn game? The, the PlayStation. Game, PlayStation and all this crap. Matter of fact. The fathers are more caught up with it than the damn kids. I ain't making no money off of it. Not, not making a dime. I mean, I understand. I mean, I understand if you was a, like an actual gamer online making money, they right. get paid. But they right. on there just trying to escape stuff. Right. Exactly. And your kids over here doing all kind of new, whatever they they doing. Out, you know what they doing out there doing right. everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 out of control, man. It's this our society. Um, is really is really in a bad way right now. It's hurting our ch- our children are suffering and they're hurting. And no one is really giving no real solutions, man. And it's sad. And as a, as a society of, a, of men and of, of adults, we should be we, we should really be ashamed of ourselves. Mm. And, and that's real, man, because we, I don't think that we give the, the situation with our children and this crime the urgency that it deserves. You know what I mean? And I'm so sick of people telling me to wait. You know, just wait. Just be patient. Everybody's telling me, hey, my prison died. Just you know, you got to be patient with this stuff. Ch- uh, change is going to come. Well, tell that to the mother, you know, who, who lost her son yesterday from, from a drive-by shooting. Mm. You know what I mean? T- tell that to the, to, the, to the elderly woman who got robbed last night. You know what I mean? Tell that to the young teenage girl who got raped while she was on her way to her, her friend's house and got raped by some clown in the alley. You know what I mean? Tell them to wait. You know, so when people say these things like, you know, give it time and let's wait. Hell, hell they're dying today. Today. Every day these kids are dying, you know, so so I'm not about this weight thing. Everything that I've done, bro, I've done without no help, really, other than, you know, the people that support me, my board of directors. But I haven't I haven't had no big onslaught of, of, of support from the mayor's office or, or from funding departments throwing me all this damn money where I can get, you know, all this stuff. To, I haven't had that. I've saved damn near a thousand children from potentially going to prison from Detroit and Atlanta in the past 10 years Ooh. without a dime being given to me. You hear me? Man. Without a dime. Really? That's great. Go to the prison doctor. The prison doctor, DR, check it out. Call the mayor's office, Mayor Dungan in Detroit. Talk to the sheriff's department, Wayne County Sheriff's Department in Detroit. Talk to Patsy Gatson, the DA out here in Gwinnett County. And I got a slew full of parents that'll give you a testimony on what I've been doing with these kids for free. Knocking on doors by my damn self, asking parents, hey, do you have an at-risk youth in here? Is there a child that's maybe going in the wrong direction that I can possibly help mentor and steer him from going to a place that I went to? You would be surprised at how many doors have opened up to me. But when it came to the, to the legislatures or, or funding departments, seeing the, the work that I'm doing and giving me a dime, it has not happened. God has blessed me to be on this mission to help these kids, and that's what the hell I've been doing. So whether the mayor's office, whether I get a, a damn dime or a nickel from anybody, I will not stop this mission of saving kids. And I'm glad right now to say that I have jobs available at this very moment 
for on-site shine in bucket, a mm. car wash that will pay these kids up to $15 an hour plus tips and even more. If these kids call me within the next three to four days, I will employ your kid, ma'am or sir, and put him to work and get him off the street. I put several water boys off the street in the past three months. You know, so this is a big deal for me, man. And I'm not playing with this. So our kids are dying. People are crying, saying, let's help. Let's let's get this job done. I'm out here doing it. I don't ask for no media attention. I don't ask for a dime. All I ask for is point me in the right direction to your kid or to any at-risk youth. Let me talk to him. You ain't got to give me a dime. Let me do what God has anointed me to do and watch me work. He working. I do my background uh, check on Mr. Prison Doctor. I mean, D Prison Doctor. He putting that work in for real. He ain't playing. That's what I like about him. It reminds me of a few people I know from like back in the day. Man, they aggressive. They about their business. They not playing. Yeah. You can't yeah. buy him off. He, he going to do his thing regardless. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know, when I when I post pictures on Instagram man, I try to post pictures of substance, pictures that uh, show the work that I'm doing to get, you know, some kind of referrals or to get some kind of to get the attention that it needs so that I can uh, help these kids. Um, but oftentimes, man, I think that uh, a lot of the programs and, and, and uh, companies out here that say that they're, you know, for kids are really about self-interest. You know what I mean? Mm. It's more like I'm seeing, you know, pictures or uh, uh, photo uh, photo ops, you know, with certain people. You know what I mean? They're, they're quick to post stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to actually seeing the work being done, where you're mentoring kids, you know, listen, I bring kids to my home, bro. Oh, wow. You hear me? Because I don't have a facility necessarily where I can take them to. So I go to either I go to the home of these kids and I mentor them in their living room or I tell the parent, hey, here's my address. You know, I'm putting myself on the line where my family is. Hey, come to my house, man. Let me mentor this child, whether it's a girl or a boy. And I've done this for the past two years since I've, you know, been out here doing this stuff, man. You know, so it's not a game to me. And again, I'm not, I haven't received a dime. The money that I spend is out of my pocket. I drive from Lawrenceville to McDonald. I think it's McDonough or McDonald. Ooh, McDonald's. McDonald's. It's like, a, it's like a damn hour away. Cherokee County. I'm, you know, driving hours away, man, on my gas. Mm. At nine at night to help some 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 at risk youth because the parent is you know can't can, can't control their child, you know. But I do this man because it's my calling and because I love children, man. And I and I, I refuse to be in this world as a man and see the way this world is going, the way this city is going, and 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 not do nothing as a man. You know what I mean? So what has happened uh, oftentimes uh, in in the communities is that the men have been demasculated. Mm. You know, the men have been made somewhat punctified. And, I, and I, I, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean it factually. A lot of men today have been punctified. Anytime you can witness someone getting beat down on the street, some woman getting raped or robbed on the street, some elderly woman getting raped or robbed on the street, and you have the audacity to say, it's not our business. Just keep going. It's not our business. Just keep going. You, you, I've, I've heard men say this. And, and see that that's kind of like my some of the things that 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 kind of where my passion comes from, where I'm so passionate, is because some of the things that I've heard men say out their mouth in regards to women and in regards to elderly people, where it's almost like they don't give a damn. There's no sense of citizenship, no sense of community, no sense of God, no sense of love, none of that, man. And so, so this is where for the audience or the people that's watching or listening, this is where my passion comes from. Mm. I spent 20 years of my life in prison. 20 years. You understand? Wow. 20. I'd be damned if I sit by and watch some youth go to prison and lose their life for something so stupid and so menial and nobody does nothing. You understand? That's not that's not the type of man I that's not that's not my heart, bro. You know, so I'm I, I don't play with this stuff, man. You know, and, and that's just where I'm at with it. So men need to start stepping up and women. You know what I mean? But everybody's scared, man. It's like everybody don't want to get involved. Nobody want to take action. Man, hell with that, man. If I got to lose my life to help a child, then damn it, I'm dead. I'm losing it. And we supposed to be able to do our work and help people out and change lives. That's it. You know, so, so many people are so selfish. Like, I don't want nothing to happen to me. I'm like, y'all just going to let it, just sit right there and just let it happen. I didn't see, like, countless videos, like you said before, a, a female getting beat down or getting jumped on or maybe worse. And people just sitting around, hey, I ain't know my business, hey, I ain't finna do me like that. Yeah, and and that, and that, and that's not right, man. It's just, I mean, if we just go to the the basic principles of right and wrong, right? As men, we talk about as men, 
you know, uh, uh, you know, I have lots of issues with women as well because most of the homes that I, I'm when I go into is uh, to mentor these kids, they're single parent homes. But I'm 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 targeting men because when I was raised, when I came up, men was from a different cloth, man. Mm. You know, there were certain things that men just didn't do. There were certain things that men did and certain things that men didn't do. You see what I'm saying? Right. Today. Men just don't give a damn about nothing. They they fall for whatever comes. You know what I'm saying? Back then, men had a certain criteria where if I'm seeing a woman getting beat down, bro, I'm, I'm getting involved. You see what I'm saying? Now, mm-hmm. if my man got a gun or a piece, it's a whole different story. You know what I mean? Back off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. Whether it's called not, I'm doing something, bro. I'm not just about to sit there and watch you beat this woman's ass in my face or rob or rape some, some woman or some child, and I do nothing. Today... A lot of these cats will tell you, man, that, hey, that, that ain't none of my business, man. I, mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I got to keep it pushing, man. I got, I, hey, man, these these niggas, I hate killing. Excuse me, you know, they they killing people. You know what I mean? That's the that's the mentality of a lot of people today, man. And I'm sorry, man, I just ain't with that. You know, and and, and, and particularly amongst our people, you know what I mean? But particularly against the African American community, I see it even even worse, man. Even worse, where you know, back in a, uh, I keep going back in the day, man, because it's, it was just such a different time back back in the day when my dad was with, you know, Motown, and I was watching them cats. You know, they weren't perfect, you know, but a lot of them cats had a, a sense of community and a sense of a love of, of people, particularly of their own people. You know what I mean? Today, man, it's like, man, we don't give a damn about nobody and nothing but ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm gonna tell you something, that's a problem. Uh, speaking of women, I think we have another guest as well, right? They want to speak. Uh, I don't know. Are you okay? You... Sure. <laughs> All right, sp- uh, tell us about yourself, Miss Lady. Tell us what's going on. Talk. You got the floor. <laughs> well, my name is Michelle. Um, I am uh, Myron's fiance, and I've been supporting him in his uh, journey and his efforts to uh, save these kids and mentor them. And you know, uh, I've been with him knocking on these doors. Uh, you know, uh, in certain neighborhoods, you know, just he's real and raw with it. You know, hey, do you have a kid here? He has his list, write, write, write your name down, taking phone numbers, and he's very passionate. All day I see him on the phone, and, you know, I'm the other part to that. I'm handling his social media. I'm making flyers. I'm, you know, reminding him to, you know, Hey, make sure you reach out to all these kids, you know, and, you know, just making sure he stays focused and stays on track and he's able to complete his his goal because this one thing I know is with men in general, if you guys don't complete what your will is, what your God's given will is, it's something about you guys that'll just fall apart, kind of, um, you know, for lack of better words. But when you have someone there supporting you, it makes you know, all the difference. So that's my role in um, Myron's life. So I just make sure, you know, he already is staying on track, but I just give him that extra push that he needs. But I'm on the day to day with him. I see everything that he does and it's just great. It's great that he's using his story to inspire others and to help others, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's very important. You gotta, gotta have support. You gotta have a, uh, a system behind your team and I love my team. I have a great board of directors uh, that support me. I have a great uh, strong following of people in in Buckhead and Atlanta uh, who are really behind me and and actually sponsoring a fundraiser for me actually coming up very, very soon in Buckhead. So I have a lot of support. A lot of people see what I'm doing. They see my passion. They see that I'm I'm not out here trying to get money and play with people. I'm actually putting myself on the line. Um, and one of the biggest things that I'm trying to do out here, man, is just stop this water boy thing. Um, uh, these kids are not all bad. You know, all these kids are not bad. Some of them are out here just trying to earn a buck, man, to buy some shoes or to put some food on the table for their mama. You know, but then you have a handful, man, that's victimizing people. Mm. You know, they're robbing people and, and even murdered a couple of their own oh, you know, kids. Man. Man. Yeah, Dang. there's a couple of kids that lost their lives, you know, selling water by rival, you know, water boys, you know, beefing with each other. You know, and lost their lives, man. Yeah, so, that is real. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jelani, matter of fact, Jelani, uh, last year, his name is Jelani Police, I believe, and he lost his life over $10, man, oh, from, uh, with man. another water boy arguing over money. You know, and so our plight is, man, um, one of the things I'm trying to do is get them kids to realize that you, that's, not your, that's not your fullest potential. You know, panhandling or selling water or, you know, begging for money, you know, that, that's, that's, that's not who we are. That's not who they are. 
You know what I mean? Um, and I think as adults, we need to start speaking more life into them and helping them hone in on their God given potential. You know what I mean? Because there's greater things inside those kids other than to be sitting on, a, you know, on, on, on a corner or standing on the corner selling water, you know, and doing stuff like that, man. That's not really who them, them kids are. They're better than that. They're more than that. You know what I mean? So we have to stop promoting that. And we have to stop rolling down our window and giving them money. You know what I mean? Because when you do that, it's almost like rewarding bad behavior. Mm. You know, first of all, these kids ain't got a permit. It's against the law. These kids are risking their lives. Many of them are even missing school and skipping school to do this kind of stuff because they're making so much money. You know, so I just don't think that's a good a good thing for us as adults to um, to um, to 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 uh, just allow that. You know what I mean? Or, or, you know, make it like that's a cool thing or it's an okay thing to do for our kids. It's really not, man. Them kids need to be in school. Them kids don't need to be standing on a corner selling water. And some of them kids are so brazen. Now, if you look at some of the videos, man, if mm. you have, some of these kids are literally running in front of cars, man, telling cars, look, stop, 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 you know, and showing their gun. You know what I mean? Give me, you know, what's up, man? And they all in, all in your window. You know, you got to do your mom, your woman, your mom in the car, your daughter in the car. And some of these kids are literally like banging on your window. Give me money. What's up, man? Let me get something. Let me get, you know, come on, man. That's just not the right thing to do, man. And so for that to be happening in our community, man, uh, and, and, letting it happen, and letting it happen, man, and nobody's doing nothing about it. It's like it's almost like the kids are like taking over. It's like it's like it's like the kids have become the parents. Mm. You know, these, you know what I mean. Nobody's doing it. The mayor's office, the the the, letting the, the, the police, the, nobody's doing that. It's just like we're allowing this stuff to happen, and 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 they know what these kids are doing. They know that these kids are out here banging on windows, robbing people, carrying guns, throwing up. You know all these. You know they know this. You know what I mean. So so. Th- what are we gonna do, man? You know, we men, we we are adults. We, we, we're the ones who's supposed to be, you know what I mean? Kind of making sure this stuff goes right, man. And it's just out of control, bro. Yeah, we gotta put in uh, proper things like you're doing right now. You're offering jobs. You say uh, you said thirty, right? Thirty positions. Yeah, I have thirty positions right now that's available for any at-risk youth. So, whoever is listening, again, you know, uh, go to my uh, Instagram, the Prison Dr. Just spell out the prison dr. Pull up my Instagram and you'll see the uh, clip I put out on that. But it's a great job. These kids are gonna be uh, they'll be getting mentored three days a week at the job site where mm. they will be working after work. Mm. They will be getting me- they will be getting mentored and also uh, education uh, type of courses they'll be getting and all kind of stuff. They'll be around uh, all kind of uh, positive influences and you know it's, it'll be a great environment. Also, it'll be an instructor there to be teaching the martial arts. I'm a black belt myself. Oh. I'm also a certified fitness instructor, you know, so they'll be getting like all kind of like different like uh, things that just kind of motivate them and, and incentivize them to want to stay on the right course. So uh, I'm really, really proud of, of uh, being able to offer these kids that. Uh, and you would think that that would have gotten all kind of news coverage. You would think that right now that would be plastered all over WSB, Channel 2, Fox News, CBS, and whatever circus y'all got out here. Mm. You would think that would be posted all over there. Oh, my God. This guy has 30 jobs available Mm. that's paying up to $15 an hour and even more. These kids would potentially be walking out maybe $100 a day, you know what I mean, just from working on cars, this particular shop anyway, because this is not uh, just a car wash. It's like a high-end shop. You know what I mean? Where they'll be doing detailing and all kind of stuff. Then they'll be getting job training where they can learn how to uh, detail and wax cars and make even more money, man. You know what I mean? You would think that's like a big deal right now. Man, it's just like it's freaking crickets right now from the news media. And hopefully they, you're going to do what you're going to do anyway. It don't word, even matter. Word going to come out. Word going to get out. My man, eventually. you better know it. Yeah, because I answer to God. I don't answer to man. Y'all just going to say, uh, with those jobs being in that particular area, that's going to motivate some kids to do better in life. Like, you know what? If I work hard, I can maybe get this car or get this particular Absolutely. position. Absolutely. That, that's great motivation to be like in a good area. Mom, you, you are good at what you do, man. Now I see what... Man, you, this is the man right here. Good questions, man. Good thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, no, that's the truth, though, man. You know, these jobs, man, is, is a big deal out here in Atlanta. I haven't heard of anybody yet that's been able to say, hey, look, I got 30 jobs for at-risk youth, put them to work right now today to make some good money and then promote them where they can make more money to detail and waxing cars. These kids will be coming out with five, six hundred dollars a week easy and getting mentored and getting educated and getting job training. I don't know too many jobs out here in Atlanta right now to saying that. So again, uh, high media, WSB and Channel 4 and Fox News. Yeah, I don't, you know, whatever. Let's make it happen for the kids. 
Oh yeah, for the kids. Uh, we're getting close to the end right now. Whoo, wait. Man, that's that's why we that's why we love the prison, Doctor. I like that fire. What are your final thoughts at this time? Get back connected to God. I think that that's that's the key, baby. Get get back connected to God, man. We we are just out of control as men, as a society, as women. You know what I mean? It's just I don't know what the hell's going on with these people, man. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Hey, I, it was, it's about you today. That's hey, why man. you're here. Well, I appreciate, it, man. This was a great opportunity for me to get my word out there, man. It's a great little thing you got going here, and I appreciate you. Very good at what you do, man. But yeah, again, parents, get get your kids back connected to God. Matter of fact, you get connected to God. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. See my Instagram, Prison Doctor. All right, and uh, on that note, uh, check out his social media and also mine at Mr. Old School Rider, of course, with the Prison Doctor. Check out everything he have going on. Support. He coming out, coming out of his pocket on this. At least y'all could donate. I know he's not asking for anything, but not try, a damn to, dime. try to uh, contribute something to him. If he can't con contribute monetary, at least uh, send one of uh, at-risk youth to him so he can mentor them. Give them some job skills and help them save their money and change their life. My man. We're over and we out from downtown Atlanta.